Now the number one story of the week, the review Congress mandated of the merger of the Office of Personnel Management into the General Services Administration is complete. Its authors find that merger wouldn't have solved the problems at OPM that the Trump administration thought it would. Janet Hale is former Undersecretary for Management at the Department of Homeland Security. She is a Napa Fellow. Peter Levine is Senior Research Fellow at the Institute for Defense Analyses, former Acting Deputy Chief Management Officer at the Pentagon. Both are on the team who produced this report. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for coming on. Peter, I start with you. How did this team go about conducting the work that it did? Well, first of all, Francis, it's great to see you again, and thanks for having us both on. Um, what we, the way that, that NAPA works is we have a study team and a panel. Um, the panel is, is an advisory panel that gives direction, uh, provides advice, shapes the recommendations, shapes the work. But we have a study team, and we had a fabulous study team on this case, that actually goes out and gathers all the documents, reviews all the documents, the laws, the regulations, interviews everybody you can imagine who has any knowledge of the issue, and brings that material back to the panel. So we were able to, to approach the issue with an open mind and know that we would have a great fact-finding effort to support our efforts as we went forward. Janet, how did you get to the point that we saw in the headlines all this week, which was, as I mentioned, that your team determined that the merger would not have worked the way the administration thought it might have worked? So as, as Peter referenced, there was a lot of documentation, a lot of conversation about what was the role of human capital in government. And I think our number one conclusion, and we got there very quickly, was a merger wasn't the answer. It was really strengthening human capital across the federal enterprise and strengthening OPM's hand in that. And that really was much more forward-looking than back about a proposal that really um, probably wasn't going anywhere anyway. But it was a very futuristic, what does OPM and the rest of the federal government need to do to strengthen human capital? Janet, the cornerstone of our government. Janet, the primary takeaway that I have from all 23 of these recommendations is that the Office of Personnel Management needs to be more strategic than tactical and that it is highly tactical now. Am I reading that right? And if so, drawing on your management experience in government, Janet, how do we get OPM from where it is today to the vision that you and your team lay out in this work? You read it absolutely correctly. Uh, first of all, we have to strengthen the vision and the execution of having human capital have a front seat in this government process. We need to have strategic leaders at OPM. We need to have not dual hatted. How many times have we seen the OPM director or acting OPM director be the deputy director for management at OMB? We need somebody focused on human capital across the government. And then we need them, as you referenced, to getting out of their compliance-based to much more focused future-looking, value-added, uh, strategic human capital to assist the agencies. Some agencies probably need more help than others. Help, I put in quotes, but you know, if you look at the large agencies where Peter or I serve, strong human capital organizations, but there may be some smaller ones that need the strategic assistance from OPM. Let's get them into doing the jobs that will benefit all across government and not into the did you dot an I or cross a T right. P Peter, one of the recommendations that I thought was most interesting, actually a suite of recommendations, but it revolved around the same theme, was the idea of moving OPM away from the fee-for-service model and toward an appropriated model. Why is that so important in the view of your team? So we're talking, Francis, we're talking about a culture shift here, the culture shift from compliance to assistance. And it's this is something that I think you and I have talked about in the area of, of acquisition, where, where, where you want to shift from the view of, of, of procurement people, how can I make you comply with the rules to have the procurement people have the view, how can I help you achieve your objectives within the rules? We want that same kind of shift for personnel that we've been looking for in the acquisition system for so many years. So um, involved in it, one way to do that is to delegate more to the, to the agencies. Um, and OPM has a lot of authority to do that already. They may, may need to get more authority from Congress to, to delegate to the agency, but there's a lot they can do within the authority they already have. 
Um, and then they need to take a more strategic view of compliance. Instead of looking at compliance on a case-by-case -case basis um, and trying to review individual transactions, they, they ought to be taking a more risk-based approach and looking at, um, at uh, agencies as on a, on a holistic basis, not transaction by transaction, but is your program something that is working in a way that is consistent with the merit system principles? If so, we can let you run with that. If we see problems, then we'll then we'll come in and try to work with you to fix it. But we're not going to try to run the system from the center on a day-to-day -day basis. Janet, we have a little bit more than a minute left. I wonder how much of the onus based on these recommendations is on the Biden administration to make changes at OPM, and how much of the onus is on Congress to give this or some future administration the latitude to do what you and your colleagues are suggesting? I would buy answer is that it's both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue. We need strong leadership at OPM and we need Congress to be sure that they're giving them the tools and the resources that they need to accomplish the mission. Peter, a uh, final thought from you. What would you like to see happen first among your recommendations moving forward? I think that, that is, it's the culture shift that we're looking for. It's great that we've got a new leader coming in. I'd like to see that new leader not be double-hatted with OMB, and I'd like to see that new leader occupy the, the office for the entire term. Uh, we've had too much turnover in that office. We really need steady leadership to rebuild and reinvigorate o OPM in the model that we're talking about. Peter Levine, Janet Hale, thanks very much. Congratulations to you and your team on this work. Thank you. Thank you, Francis.